When you say something is common, some people will take it as an insult. Odd. But when you say something is popular, people will on the other hand take it as a compliment. The odd thing is that when you think of a car, the first car that you think of when you put these two adjectives together is, well, these babies right here. This is the 2021 Toyota Innova V, while this is the 2021 Toyota Innova E. Now we've brought both of them here today to show the spectrum of the range and of course the versatility of the Innova platform, whether you go for the more expensive V or the more affordable E. AutoDeal.com.ph can connect you to get the best quote from multiple dealerships near you. You can request and compare quotes from any dealership in the Philippines. Get the best deal with AutoDeal. If you do a search looking for photos or videos for an Innova, eh, don't bother because most of us can step two feet out of our own humble abodes to be able to see one in the metal. And to be honest with you, describing the exterior would be like describing your face to yourself. It's just really odd because, quite literally, they are staples on Philippine roads. Of course, this is the facelifted model, and it carries a few new updates over the pre-facelift, like a new grille design, a new bumper, and really, that's about it. Basically, if you haven't seen an Innova, you need to get out of the house, man. So the V features a bit more chrome than the E. The E gets a few additions that make it look a little bit more basic, but still, we're not really complaining about the overall design. I mean, it is popular, so apparently a lot of people tend to like this car, but it's just a little too common for it to be unique anymore, just to be frank. On top of that, you get 17-inch wheels on the V wrapped in 55 series tires and 16-inch wheels on the E wrapped in 65 series rubbers. Both trims get headlights that are similar in design, sporting a projector, but only the V gets LEDs while the E gets halogens. For the price of the E, not that bad. The rear lamps are still similar to the old model, and so is the rear bumper. There are no step boards because the ground clearance isn't that high to begin with, standing at just 167 millimeters of ground clearance. <laughs> You're gonna get a kick out of this, because under the hood of both variants is the exact same engine that you will find inside the Fortuner, albeit a bit detuned. In them, you get a 2.8 liter turbo diesel engine that produces 172 horses and 360 newton meters of torque mated to a six-speed automatic transmission. In contrast, the Fortuner Limited makes 201 horses and 500 newton meters of torque out of the same displacement. So you know that Toyota was really playing it safe with this car. Now in terms of fuel efficiency, less power when you step on the loud pedal and it is a lighter body, so you're able to do about nine kilometers per liter inside the city. When, when that clears up, you're doing about 13 kilometers per liter. On the highway, when you stretch its legs, you can sail past 18 kilometers per liter, which in total is really not bad. First, let's cover the E. It's as standard as you can get for a car nowadays. Some of us actually prefer the interior of the Innova. It's not as simple as the Fortuners or the Hiluxes. Toyota was able to add curves and angles that are very easy on the eyes. The textures on here break up the front of the cabin and add a little more flavor. The 6.75 inch infotainment screen in here isn't the clearest nor is it the fastest, but it does come with Android Auto and Apple CarPlay. Sadly, in the E, there is no backup camera. The sound system in here, well, works, but it doesn't produce the clearest sound and it gets overwhelmed by too much bass. Now, moving into the V, it's really, well, like night and day. The captain's chairs alone are enough to give this thing a very special feel. On top of that, you also get a different colored upholstery. We only wish that it was leather, so we wouldn't have to drape seat covers to protect it. And quite literally, on top of that, you get some mood lighting. It only comes in one color, but hey, it's something. The V has a slightly bigger head unit than the E with a seven inch screen, but with the addition of a reverse camera. You also get slightly bigger speakers, but the sound quality cuts out if the bass is just too heavy. Oh, and get this, keyless entry and push start. Again, the E only gets a flip key. Fancy. Now, if asked, 
I'd rather take a road trip in the V, obviously, but the E will do. The E is a seven-seater and the V is a six-seater because the rear in both is already cramped, but even more so in the top spec variant. Now, that being said, seating for the middle row is pretty okay with lots of headroom, just enough legroom, and just enough side to side, while the rear is reserved for, well, as you'd know, smaller people. You get airbags for both the driver and passenger along with side and curtain shield airbags. The driver gets the added bonus of having a knee airbag as well. On top of the airbags, the MPV comes with vehicle stability control, hill start assist, and an emergency brake signal. It also comes with ABS as standard for all variants including EBD. The V variant additionally gets backup sensors, a security system, and an immobilizer for added security. Behind the wheel of the Innova, and to be honest with you, it's not a spectacular car. I mean, what do you expect? It's a pretty normal car. I mean, let's face it, chances are that most of you guys watching, if you haven't driven an Innova, it's most likely you've actually been in one before. The steering is not that heavy, but it's weighty. Again, it's pretty much what you'd expect. Although we will say that we're enjoying the torque of the diesel engine quite a bit. Of course, it's not as powerful as the Fortuner LTD or Limited, but it's got some decent grunt and a nice mid-range. Great for hauling and a bit of weight. If you've never driven an Innova, which I doubt, you'll find that the power will kind of catch you because it's quite torquey in here. And plus, when you put it in power mode, it keeps the rev at a good range so that when you're overtaking, it's not a problem, even at speed. The tires in the V are much quieter than those here in the E, so it's much quieter in there, especially when you're on the highway. Now, the overall ride comfort is pretty similar though. It does tend to send a rattle to people inside when you're going over rougher roads like those of Edza. The steering is not that heavy, but it's weighty and it feels good. Although I gotta admit that we do enjoy this engine because it's got a lot of grunt to it. Yes, it's not as powerful as the Fortuner, but damn, this thing's actually a lot of fun to drive. And the seats do an okay job of keeping you in place thanks to the bolstering. Though mild, it's better than nothing. However, on normal roads, it's still pretty bouncy. It's not as alarming as, let's say, for example, a pickup truck. No, nothing like that. But it kind of slots in just in the middle of a pickup truck and an SUV. But the NVH isolation, as in most Toyotas, is top notch. Having this car long term is definitely what many people have in mind when purchasing an Innova. And the tech in here will do you good, well, for now. Sadly, there is no cruise. So the designated driver on long road trips yeah, will be wishing it was included in here. The infotainment is simple to operate, though the small screen will have you double checking if you press the right thing or took the correct exit since everything is quite compressed given that it's a small screen. And though it's given that this thing as a whole will last a very long time, I mean it's a Toyota, but I think this infotainment will age quite quickly given how fast technology moves nowadays. Now, once you're at speed, the Innova doesn't handle so great. It is a bit top heavy and there's a little bit of body roll. But then really, what do you expect? It's a family hauler, it's a people mover. So don't think that it's a Supra when you get inside the car. Don't drive like it's a Supra, cause well, it's not. It's such an easy choice for families, if we're being honest. I mean, you've got local manufacturing, parts availability, and a track record that basically sells itself. However, you will have to stretch your bank accounts if you're looking towards the V, because this is priced at almost 1,740,000 Philippine pesos, which is why we brought along the E, because that can do almost everything that you need priced at just 1,355,000 Philippine pesos. However, in our opinion, the G variant of the Innova is more of the perfect balance to get the bang for your buck. Bottom line, is it a good car? Some people would say, yeah, it's good enough. A lot of people would say, no, it's great enough. To me, however, what this car represents in the Philippines, well, it's neither a rock star, a superstar, or a supernova. But do as it may sound, it's an innova.